Ao. Svantna ina yustelin ine rasia dinos tesarine. We want to continue with this discussion of the royal law or the commandments, this confusion that has developed among many um, Christians in particular concerning the law, concerning the commandments, and concerning whether we are under the law or we are in laws, and what is the real role that the law, i.e. the Ten Commandments, have in this present time or for us as Christians or in Christ, in the Mashiach, in the Moshiach. Now, Crown Christ had asked a question concerning one of the videos um, concerning ordinances and asked, are ordinances, codes, and statutes not different from the commandments, specifically the Ten Commandments, as well as what were our thoughts on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, um, Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, and Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 to 25. So what we did was to write this up right here and take this note down as best as you can concerning the royal law, firstly the royal law, or the king's law, and the ceremonial law, which is known as the Yetizazaten or Yetizazathig, Yetizazaten the Hig, and the royal law, which is known as Yetnegus Hig or Yetnegusin Hig, the the king's law or the royal law. But first, to get a, a put all this into into um the best and, and, and the most proper perspective, what we're going to do is we're going to look at those areas of Scripture, the areas of Scripture which we were asked what were our thoughts on the areas of Scripture. These are actually our thoughts on these areas of Scripture. But in order to put into better perspective, let us go to the Scriptures and go through each of them briefly to get a better idea of what... Um, Crown Christ had asked us concerning our ordinances, codes, and statutes not different from the Ten Commandments, and we explained that the law was given in a trifold or a threefold way, in a three-part way. The, the commandment was given, the ordinances or statutes, ordinances sometimes are called the statutes or the serat according to the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic. And then thirdly, we have the judgments. The third part of the trifold giving of the law concerns the judgments, concerning the judgments. We also explain that the, the commandment, according to Exodus chapter 20, that was given is what's known as the pure law or the righteous will, what we put up here, the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh, the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh also called in James 2 and 8 called the royal law, or literally Bamarinya in the Amharic of the Metaf Kedus of Ketamali Halasalasi, known as Yenegus Hug, or the king's law, the law of the king. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, we have what's known as the Decalogue. The Decalogue, which more correctly is the ten words, not the ten commandments. Often these ten words have been called the Ten Commandments, but more careful examination and study and the more careful scrutiny of the scripture, we find that it's not plural, it is singular, it's t-i-za-z, t i z t and often Yahweh refers to the t i z in the Royal Amharic as t i z z my command, singular, my command, distinct from what we have over here as the ceremonial law, or which is the law of commandments, the law of commandments. Underneath we have Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. So let's look at this for a moment. Let's look at this for a moment. What a Ephesians so much to the Melikita, to the people, of Ephesus to the Christians, the first century Christians 
who were located in the city of Ephesus or Ephesus, what Ephesus said, what you mean, who let a cutter, 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 a rat, and a cutter, a ser, a mist, and then Milo, Ursu, Salamachin, no winner, who let tuna ya wahade, be awaja yete negarutinim, yet is a zatina hug. Shero be mekakela yaluen yetilla gidgidana be sagawa yaferese. Yehima ko hule tacho and in adisina so be rasu ye fetir zen salaminema yadarig zen. For the Targum, King James Targum is translation is, for he is our peace, our su. Salamachin no wina. He is our shalom. He is our salam. Arsu salamachin no wina. Who hath made both? Who hath made both one? Who hath made both one? Who let tun yawahade yawahade and pay careful attention. Note that word yawahade. Yawahade is, is related to the. Ethiopian church teaching known as or the or the true orthodoxy, the, the, the right teaching, the Ritua Hymenot, known as Tewahido, 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 Ya Wahade, to, to, to be made one, to be made one. So when it says who hath made both one, this proves that Tewahido in spirit and in truth is the right or is the true orthodoxy, not the foreign orthodoxy that came in in the fourth century in Ethiopia, but the original teaching of this oneness of God in Christ, which is known as Tawahido. So it says, Who let ya wahade be awaj yete negarutinim ye tizazatina hug shero. It says, and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, here's the part, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. That's the phrase right here, Be'awaj yete negarutinim yete izazatina hug shero. This is important. Be'awaj, by proclamation, yete negarutinim, that which was that which was told. You understand that which was told by way of a proclamation. Yet tin of the commandments, plural. Hig the law of commandments. Shero he he abolished this law of commandments. You understand that was contained in ordinances or contained in a proclamation, the awaj. Now, this is very important for us to distinguish the so-called Ten Commandments, which is more correctly the Ten Words, from the ceremonial law, which is known as Yetizazat Hug, or Yetizazat Ten Hug. And this is what Ephesians 2, verses 14 to 15 is speaking of, but where we have to go is to now James 2 and 8 as a response to this to balance out and to put this particular verse in its proper, in, in its proper context scripturally. Because we say if it's not in context, then what we have is, 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 is nonsense. And we don't need any more nonsense. We need to put matter, matters into context. So let's go to, um, yeah, Ya'ikov, Melikit, Mi'raf, Huleta, Kutera, Cement, verse uh, 8 of chapter, of chapter 2, it says, Negergin, Metzahaf, Balinjarahin, in the Rasih, Wood dead, in the meal, Yengusin, Hug, Bitter Fetzmu, Melkam, Tader Galachu. If ye, if all of you, if all of I and I to say, fulfill the royal law or the Yengusin Hug, the king's law, if we are mature, 
if we are if we are full and complete in the king's law, it says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye, you all, all of I and I, do well if we keep and if we fulfill, as it says, bitte fetzemu, the negus hig, the negus hig, which is the royal law. This is why we put them in separate, separate columns. Firstly is the royal law, which is called the king's law, which in Exodus chapter 20 is known as the commandment or the ten words. The commandment and the ten words is one, but oftentimes people have been told that the ten commandments, and that kind of has crept in, that has crept in because of a lack of study and a lack of comprehension into Gentile Christianity, into Gentile Christianity, but from the beginning in the true uh, Judeo or the Judea Christianity called the Nazarim or the Nazara, the, the Nazarenes, the Nazarawian, the Nazarenes, among the Nazarenes who were the early Christians, the first Christians were called the, a sect of the Nazarenes before they were called Christi, Christian or Christianoi in Antioch, in Antioquia. In Antioquia. They were called um, Christians in Antioch the first time. So that now addresses that first, that first um, um, quote that we have, that first quote from Ephesians. So now some, not understanding this right here, not understanding the difference between the royal law and the ceremonial law, because when they read Hawaii Apollos, when they read um, Paul, and let's get this right here, when they read Paul, we have to keep in mind what um, uh, Petros, what Peter said in his epistle. And what Peter said in his epistle, he said right here in um, the second epistle of Peter, chapter 3, at verse um, 15, the account, an account, an account that the long suffering of our Lord, of Adunenu, of Getachin, is salvation even as our beloved brother Paulos or Paul also according to the wisdom given to him have written to you, as also in all his epistles or, the, or, or, or the, the letters, the letters of Paul which are called the epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. This is what we have here. Some things are hard to be understood which they that are unlearned, those who are undiscipled, who are unlearned and therefore undisciplined in the word of truth and unstable, they wrestle with this as they do also the other scriptures to their own, to their own destruction. So there's many who say that the law of God is done away with. And many Christians, many preachers, and many pastors, perhaps you're preacher or pastor has, has said that, that we are not under the law. They've quoted scripture without understanding the exact context of that particular scripture and have made many in their congregations believe or be like Eve that which is not true. It's almost like what happened in the Ganeta Eden. You understand? In the Garden of Eden, it's, it's very much the same way. Half not God said. You understand? Half not God said. But the fact is that when Hawaii Apollos is saying in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, that the Moshi, the Moshi Yeshua, or, or Geta Iesus, is our peace, our Rasulamachinawina, who hath made both one, who let Tun Yawahade, the, the Tawahido, has made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or that hatred between the seed of the serpent, the seed of, of, of Satan, or the seed of the serpent, and that seed of the woman, to put it into the Jew and the so-called Gentile um, context, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain of the two, one new man, one Adis, Adis so, so making, so making peace. Now, the second, 
uh, quote from uh, Colossians or Colossians, or what a Colossians or what which I let, chapter 2 of Colossians, verses uh, 16, I think you had quoted to us, um, um, 16 to 17, verses 16 and 17, and it reads, Bamarinyas Kermos, in Gedi. Be mebel wine, be met at a wine, a sille, be all a wine, a sille, were a mebacha, wine, sille, sendet, manem, a yif red the batch, manem, a yif red batch. Let no man therefore judge you in meat to say be mebel in that which is edible. It doesn't say meat like to say flesh or dead, it says in meat in the sense of in meal or in drink, or in respect of an holiday, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath, the Shabbat day, let no man judge against you. Let no man condemn you to say. Verse uh, 17, in the Z, li metu ya akalu gin ye Christos, no, ye kalu gin, ye akalu, ye akalu, akalu gin, the body, but the body, akalu gin ye Christos, ye mashi, no which are a shadow of things to come. So it says, in the Z, these limetu, to come, yalu to negroch, that which is these things to come, you understand, atilla, shadow, nachuina, for they are a shadow, they are a shade. There is a shadow or a shade of uh, things to come. It says, akalu, Akalu, the hypostasis, or what's often called the body, the body. But the, here's where it gets confusing for many um, uh, linguistically challenged individuals that have only studied the Bible in the King James sense. And King James was 1611. Now is 2011, 400 years. It's the 400 year anniversary of the King James version of uh, the Bible. So it's 400 years later, and language has changed. So when somebody reads this, for example, they might not understand, well, what does it mean when it says the body? They may think it's talking about the, the, the corpus Christi or, or the dead body of, of Yeshua. You understand? They may think it's speaking of that body, but it's not speaking of that body. It's speaking of the hypostatical body. When we say hypostasis, we're speaking about the church. Or in legal, modern legal terms, you can go to Black's um, um, law book. Black's law book give a perfect uh, definition of the corporate body, what a corporate body is, where like a corporation is accounted as an individual. Now, it's not new in the West, well, in the Western sense it's new, but it's not new in, in the legal sense that a group of people come together and they form what is known as a person. In other words, those people together are an akal, or akalu is of Christ. In other words, the body. So all of us as a corporate entity, I and I and I in the fellowship of the King of Kings and his Christ, of Christ and his kingly character, are that corporate body. So it's like the line of Jesus Society of the Imperial Majesty, though there may be many of us, we are one, you understand, in Christos or in Christ. So we're that corporate body. This is what it's speaking of right here. It's saying, but the corporation of Christ is one. You understand this particular verse here. Now, most would focus on verse 16 where it says, let no man therefore judge you in, in, in meat or in, in mebel, in, 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 in meal, and that which is edible in what you eat, or in what you drink, or in respect of a holiday, or of the new moon, or or of the Sabbath days, it says right here, Now, what's important to note is people don't understand the Sabbath, that the Sabbath is the, there is a weekly Sabbath, or every week there is a there is a seventh day, and that is the rest day, or the Sabbath, or the Shabbat day, and every holy day of 
during those three times that the Beta Israel, all the males of the Beta Israel are to gather together in the one Mamach that you understand, Fikr, are to gather together, there are seven holy days and holy times, and you can consult with our Hebraic holy days and the calendar to better understand the context of what it means when it talk about Sabbath days in the plural. Although here in them heart, the collective sense is meant, you understand, of both the weekly and the annual Shabbats or the annual Sabbaths. Let no one judge you because in the form of religion or Judaism that the people of this first century time were exposed to is much like the form of um, orthodoxy that the Ethiopian church and many of the Ethiopian faithful are exposed to in this present time. That it's in the image, it's in the shadow of the truth, but it has gone away from that and has become pharisaical. Uh, dogmatic, judgmental, and is not even based on the true teaching. This is what the Moshiach, Yehoshua, Jesus Christos, when he would rebuke and, and he would reprove and condemn the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were the guardians of the faith, of the Hebraic faith. But they had turned it like Balaam, like, like Balaam, they turned it into a market and into a marketplace. They saw it they saw it um, unrighteous prophet, and they kept the people in an ignorance, much like Christianity today, where people would say they go to church, and they think that means that they are righteous because they go to church, but they do not know what is contained in the Bible. You understand? They, don't, they are ignorant of the word, and Christ would say that um, ye know not, ye do err. You are in error. You do err. Ye know not the scriptures nor the power of God. So he says that the people in that time were in error because they did not know the scriptures. Therefore, they did not know the power of God. And he would say to the Samaritan woman, ye worship that which ye know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of Moa and this is them, Negeta Yehuda. For salvation is of the Jews. So salvation in this prophetic time is of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You understand? Salvation is of his imperial majesty in and through Christ. So that's the second verse right there. It's not saying that the holidays are not important. It's not saying that, that, that food is, is not important. But some had gone too far. You understand? And plus, it wasn't them. It wasn't a set of priests or religious leaders or authorities that really were empowered, spiritually speaking, seeing that they were not keeping the scriptures. They were not speaking God's word, but they had made it into their own form of business or religion. You understand? They had gone away from the true intent of the spirituality. They had gone away from that and had turned religion in that sense into a for-profit company, a, a for-worldly profit sort of a business. Now let's deal with the third, the third um, verse that we were asked, what is our... Um, thoughts on these areas of scripture because it, it concerns the question that Crown Christ had asked, are ordinances, codes, and statutes not different from the commandments, specifically the Ten Commands? Now, third scripture that was um, given to us, um, suggested to us for our, our thoughts on is what a Galatia Sawoch min Eraf Sauce or Galatians, what's known as Galatians chapter three, verses uh, 24 to 25, but to put into context, we actually are going to go to verse 23 to 25, which reads, Imnetim beta But before faith came, before faith came, we were kept under the law. We were kept, we were protected in a sense, under the law. We was, protect, we was in protective custody in that sense, under the law. Shut up to the faith. Locked in to the faith which should afterward be revealed. So the law was to keep this, this chosen community of people until that faith in the person of Yeshua HaMushiach could be revealed. Verse uh, 24. In the Z, 
moga zitachina honoag. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. The law was our nanny. The law was our mogzit, mogzitachin. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to the mushi, to bring us to Christos, to bring us to Christ in his kingly character, that we might be justified, so that we might be put into right alignment by faith, by faith. Verse 20. Five imnet gin imnet gina metito alina kan gadia wadia ka mogzita betach idelenim. It says, but after that faith, after that faith is come, when we now become mature in the faith, not weak in faith, weak in the scriptures, weak in knowledge, but when we become mature in faith. Is strong in faith, so therefore faith has firmly and fully come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, under a schoolmaster. We're no longer under the mogzi, under the law, which is like the nanny. The law in that sense was our nanny. We were under the law as children. But now that we have gone through that rite of passage in the Moshia, in Christos, in Christ and his kingly character, we are no longer under the law, but we are now in law. You understand? It's just like in the Hebrew and even the Ethiopic um, ancient and righteous Judeo-Christian communities where the child goes through a rite of passage. Actually, there are several points of rite of passage, but the major rite of passage is around the age of, of 13, 14 years of age, between the 13th and the 14th year of age where the young male or female you understand, in the Hebraic society, now comes into those adult responsibilities. But up until this time, they are being taught they are under the law. They're not able to exercise themselves in law or to be responsible, a responsible member of the community. So they are under the law. But now they become in-laws when they go through that rite of passage that's known as bar mitzvah, or, or bat mitzvah that we called were the tizaz or walete tizaz. And the tizaz is not tizazat, but it's tizaz. His commandment, the ten words, the decalogue, which expresses the pure law or the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh. Now, there's a couple of other matters that's important about this that we need to touch on, that we touched on when we first went through the. Um, commandment, the ordinances, and the statutes, and mentioned that, well, the code, what is the code is the, that uh, Christina, that Christ is our code, that, that the King of Kings is our code, and the Metaf Kedus is the manual of that code, of that honor code, that glory code, as the Imperial Majesty would state, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So that is our code, but concerning the trifold giving of the law, we had touched on some of the basics of that in the appropriate video that we had did before this particular um, teaching right here. But something important to understand when the pure law was given, or the royal law, the negus hig, or, or higa negus, higa negus and neges was given, is that there was no provision for priesthood in this royal law. There was no provision for animal sacrifices, if you see this over here, animal sacrifices, there was no provision for animal sacrifices for sin, for hatiyat, therefore no provision for priesthood, because the Almighty's Yahweh's Elohe Israel's, his original and true intention was that we would be a nation of the priesthood or a nation of priests. So there would be no, there would have been no need for a particular group of priests to officiate and to minister on the sinfulness of the people because the people were a righteous nation or a nation that fulfilled that, that, that fulfilled the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh, of the sustainer Yahweh Baruch Hu, of Hashem, of Ha Elohim, of the true God and the King of Kings and His Christ. Now, this is called the Law of Commandments. The ceremonial law is known as the Law of Commandments which is contained in ordinances or by proclamation. And this was for sin and failure. 
This was because of the sin and the failure, the shortcomings of the people living up to God's pure law or his command that had ten words to it that was known as the Asurta Kalat or the ten words or falsely in, in technically incorrect terms the Ten Commandments. And you if you look through the scripture, you would not find um it mentioned Ten Commands. If you if you look for ten and anything you will find the ten words. There were the ten words, not the so called ten commandments. And this is very, very important. This is a very important distinction right here. Therefore we're trying to weed ourselves out of calling it erroneously the Ten Commands and more correctly, the Decalogue or the Ten Words, which are His Commandment, His Command. His Command was one, one command. And this command had, when originally given, had no provision for priesthood, no provision for animal sacrifices for sin and failure. But when now, when sin and failure came through the golden calf incident, for example, you understand? Therefore, a ceremonial law came into effect, and this ceremonial law was a secondary law to augment the failure of the people to fulfill the first law. But the first law is forever. It's forever and ever and ever. It's this pure and righteous will. Now, if some find that the 42 negative confessions of Ma'at, you understand, are where they would like to believe the origin of these ten words are, we will say that even before the 42 negative confessions of Ma'at, this was still the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh or the true God, the true God and Father that created heaven and earth and the seas. It, 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 it's quite plain to understand that. Now, did Moses become familiar with the 42 negative confessions? Well, of course. But he was preserving and through the, through the Beta Israel and the Hebrews was preserving that ancient and that true faith that even Noah and ancient Ethiopia, you understand, observed, and that was the faith in Yahweh. So Yahweh is not a new God, is not a newly formed God. It was not that Moses made up a new God as many of the ignoramuses and the profane populi would like to say and to think. Now, there was this book here. You might have seen this before. It was um, by... Uh, an, an A. Jan Marcusson, and it was called um, The National Sunday Law, A Shocking Glimpse Behind the Scenes, Forces Unite Amid Stupendous Crisis. Now, in this particular book, I think this is like either a seven-day Adventist. Um, there are certain points that some of them who are Sabbath keepers, you understand, um, point to concerning the law and the change of God's law by the Romanists and the Roman Catholic Church in particular, which is just like the Pharisees. The Roman Catholics are like the, the, the Christian Pharisees, so, the, so, so to speak. But there's also their, their, um, their poison has also infected even the Ethiopian Orthodox Church as um, many have been able to see, and hopefully more will come to the recognition thereof. But when we go to this appendix right here, it speaks of the ceremonial law and the two covenants. It says the distinction between the moral law of God, and in brackets has the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words, and the ceremonial law is plain. And I want you to make a note of this because there are many people who get confused when they read, on one hand, Hawadi Apollos, the Coptic Hebraic Apostle Paul, stating that um, the law is pure and holy and eternal and forever. And then in another area of his epistles, it says, but the law is done away with, we're not under the law anymore. You understand? And then people will say, well, see, we don't have to abide by God's pure and the righteous will because of the grace of God in Christ or the grace of Christ. But when you do that, you fall from grace. That's exactly how Satan or the Satanistic mindset falls from grace. When you do that in ignorance, in the first and original sin was ignorance, was not knowing, and that led to the disobedience. Now, when you look carefully at the difference in the two, in the royal law and the ceremonial law, when you look carefully at the differences and the distinctions in the two, the one with the animal sacrifices 
which is this, the ceremonial law, yet to Izazat, to Izazat, Higg, that Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15 is speaking of, that this was nailed to the cross. And the other, which was the first, you understand, from the Kedem, you understand, is the royal law or the king's law, yet Negus Hig will stand forever and ever and ever. So let's look at these about six points here that they lay out that shows um, the difference between what they call the Ten Commandments, what we call the royal law or his commandment, and the ceremonial law. You understand? That was the law of commandments contained by Awaj or in ordinances or in proclamations. Firstly, as we already touched on right here, it is called the royal law. The first matter that we have to understand is that it was called the royal law or your Negus Hook. The ceremonial law, it is called the law contained in ordinances according to Ephesians 2 and 15. The law of commandments contained in ordinances. Secondly, the royal law or the king's law was spoken by Ha Elohim. It was spoken by the true God. It was spoken by Hashem. It was spoken by the God of Abraham, Yisahak, and Yaakov. It was spoken by the first power of the Trinity. While the ceremonial law was spoken by Musa, was spoken by the head of the fraternal order of the Lewawiyan. You understand the fraternal order of the Levites. You understand all the Hebrews. It was spoken by Moses according to Leviticus. This is where you find this Zazat, this word, as you study this in the Metaf, Kedus of Negus and the Gaz, the plural, the plural laws or, or, or commandments. You find this chiefly, chiefly in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, we find that Moses spoke this. The Awaj, 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 Awaj. You understand? Proclamation, proclamation, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. He spoke this, you understand, by ordinance or by proclamation. Now, thirdly, the third matter concerning the royal law, you understand, pseudonymously called the Ten Commandments, is that it was written by the finger of Ha Elohim, the true God, Hashem, you understand, the first power of the Trinity, Hashem, the name, spoke this and wrote this with his own digitalis, with his own digital, with his own finger, with the finger of God. He wrote this with his own finger. You understand? With the finger of God in Exodus 31 and 18. While the ceremonial law, the law that was done away with, done away with, you understand? The ceremonial law was written by Musa, by Moses. Moses wrote this ceremonial law in a book. We find this in Second Chronicles chapter 35 and 12, that Moses wrote the ceremonial law in the book, but the royal law was written by the finger of God. Do you see the differences between these two laws? You understand? Between these two laws. Firstly, firstly is the royal law. Secondly is the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law was because of sin and failure. Therefore, it brought in a priesthood. Therefore, it brought in animal sacrifices, you understand, for sin and failure. But this was the law that was done away with, with Jesus Christos, with Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshi. Geta Chin Jesus Christos did away with this ceremonial law and with that old priesthood, you understand, under Lewi or under Levi, for the new priesthood under Yehuda. And the book of Hebrews, the epistle of Hebrews, points that out. I think it's chapter 7 that actually touches on that point right there. Now, the fourth matter, the fourth point is that the royal law, pseudonymously, falsely called the Ten Commandments, more correctly, the Decalogue or the Ten Words, you understand, the Ten Words, was placed in the Tabot. It was placed in the Tabot. It was placed in the Ark. You understand, in the Ark of His covenant. It was placed in the ark of his covenant according to Exodus chapter 40 verses 20 you understand, and Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. While the ceremonial law, the secondary law, you understand, to augment because of the sin and the failure to fulfill, 
the royal law, you understand, know it was placed in the side of the tabot. It was placed in the side of the Ark of the Covenant. It was placed in the side of the Ark, the ceremonial law that was done away with, that, that had animal sacrifices. You understand, know spiritually it's interesting if you look at Rastafari, the original Rastafari, that there was this, this um, anti- animal sacrifice in Rastafari, this, this purity about the original revelation of Rastafari against the sacrifice of animals or debtors. You understand? It, it, it's a very important distinction. We'll find furthermore that Hawadi Apollos was also a vegan by his own particular nature, but it's interesting that the same controversy about eating meat or not eating meat was there in the first century Christian or the first century Nazarene Nazarene movement of the Nazarenes. You understand? So we get to see there's a consistency from Old Testament to New Testament to the present revelation of the King of Kings in his Christ. So the ceremonial law was placed in the side of the ark, while the royal law was placed in the ark. And in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 24 to 25, we get to read how the ceremonial law, the law contained in ordinances that was spoken by Moses and written in a book by Moses, was placed in the side of the ark. The fifth matter is that the royal law, Yenigus Hug, is to stand forever and ever, according to Psalm 111. Verses 7 and 8. It's, a eternal, it's the eternal law because it is his pure and righteous will, the pure and righteous will of Yahweh. These ten words, which is one command. Not ten commandments, but it's one command of ten words. The Decalogue, the Aserte Kalat, right? But the ceremonial law, according to Colossians 2 and 14, According to Colossians 2 and 14, the ceremonial law or the law contained in ordinances, but a lot so spoken by Moses, it was nailed to the tree. It was nailed to the cross. It was nailed to that branch, that, that natsa. You understand? It was nailed to the cross. It was done away with. You understand? The sixth matter. The Negus Hig was not destroyed by Moshiach. It was not destroyed by Moshiach. So you have certain Christians that say that, that um, Christ did away with the royal law. He did away with the commandment. You understand? He did away with the Decalogue. He did away with that. They are antichrists. They are liars. They are false apostles. You understand? They should not be speaking the word of Ha Elohim such, even in translation. You understand? Because the... Royal law, yeah, Negus Hig, Negus and Negus Hig, the law of the King of Kings and his Christ was not destroyed by Moshiach. Moshiach did not destroy that. And what's the proof? Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. The proof that Moshiach did not destroy this is in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Now, the ceremonial law, on the other hand, it was abolished. You understand? It was abolished by Mashiach. It was abolished by Christos. It was abolished by Christ. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. Now, this is very, very, can I stress how important understanding this basic fundamental matter is the distinction between the king's law and the ceremonial law. So you can see clearly there are two laws. You understand there are two laws. But originally in the intent of Yahweh, in the intent of the El Elohe Israel, the true God of Israel, Hashem, we were to fulfill this royal law or this king's law. But because of the sin and the failure of the people, chiefly and ideally in the, in the golden Hathor, you understand, the golden Hathor incident or the golden calf incident, it basically showed that they were not able to, you understand, but they still was kept in protective custody until faith came, until the Moshiach came, you understand, and the Moshiach 
put everything in proper order. This is why even in the New um, Testament, especially in Revelation, it says that the overcomers, the overcomers are those who keep the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christos. So when you study and show yourself approved, you know, saying to God as a workman that need not be ashamed but rightly divide the word of truth, you will understand how these antichrists lie when they say the law of God was done away with. You know what I'm saying? The ceremonial law really wasn't, in that sense, the law of God. It was the law that basically kept these people, the chosen people, who were sinful people, who kept falling away to worshiping idols and doing as the heathen do, just like in this present season, you understand, and, and many so-called folly day seasons in Babylon, people get caught up, going, and, and they don't figure it's, it's really that sinful, you understand, to get caught up in it. Well, it is for I and I if we're in covenant in this royal law, because the people said that they would keep this, and they did not keep the pure and the righteous will of Yahweh, and they were about to be destroyed, and, and Moses beseeched beseech Yahweh on, on, on many, Moses and Haron and Aaron beseech Yahweh. And therefore this ceremonial law, you understand, was put into effect. And this ceremonial law is often called um, the statutes and the ordinances. This is the additional statutes and the ordinances. You understand? So let us understand the distinction and the difference between the two, and we hope that this better helps to explicate and explain that, the, um, you know, how the ordinances and the statutes and the judgments are, 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 are different, you understand, than the pure command or the royal law, which is often falsely or miscalled the Ten Commandments, more properly called the Ten Words, or the Decalogue, and those verses that you quoted um, from Ephesians 2 and 15 and Colossians 2, verses 16 to 17, Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 to 25, we give thanks and praise because these are the very verses when rightly understood and put into its proper context, you understand, basically explain that the royal law is still in effect, you understand, or the king's law, his command. Because even Revelation shows us that the overcomers keep the commandment of God, the commandment, which is the royal law of God, you understand? and the testimony of Jesus Christos, which has done away with this ceremonial law, the old priesthood or the old religiosity and the animal sacrifices, you understand, have been done away with on the tree, on the cross of Christ. So, my brothers and sisters... Stay tuned. More to come. Shabbat Shalom. Sende Salam.